All right then. Let's see see what's in store for us now. And it's worth knowing, I don't actually remember a lot of like these fights. Like I know that there's like you know that servants fight with like you know the hidden cave there. I actually didn't know about this fight, but this fight here, I don't necessarily know what it is until like you know I jump into it. So we're gonna have to see what it's all about. And in a lush valley between two looming mountains, you cross paths of a Teutonic hunting party. They are eight, mostly trappers, but with a few warriors among them and the unmistakable fettered silhouette of a shaman. They come to stop as soon as they see you, regarding your group from a safe distance before your move. Marisol Castell draws her weapon. They're just savages, and they're in their way. I recommend we pass them with our weapons drawn. If they try anything, we're well within our rights to defend ourselves. Gabriel Yabara shifts her weight restlessly. They don't look too dangerous in a straight up fight, but if they catch us unaware from behind, they might do some damage. Better to kill them before they kill us. Isabel Uranus folds her arms across her chest. If we approach with our weapons drawn, it will only provoke them to attack us. So, Tatsu can basically prepare to defend yourself on defend this area, we'll fight them on our own terms. Diplomacy, approach with your weapons sheathed, or draw your weapons and approach carefully. We'll try and be nice to them because they are tectonics and you know we're trying to be friendly to these guys. Draw your weapons. Or you know. Okay, so this is the diplomacy I'm gonna do here. So let's just do diplomacy. I'm not I might may fail this, but we'll see how it goes. Your people carefully follow you past the tonic hunters. You take care to avoid moving your troops in anything that might resemble a comet formation. And the warriors regard you nervously, but not aggressively, as you pass them. Not until they are well out of sight behind you do your expedition members breathe a sigh of relief. So, an event. So, we lost a little bit of like you know morale for our uh, aggressive followers, but the peaceful ones basically half about that. I didn't realize that guy would be like you know friendly to us. So, okay, that's great. Oh, I got watch out for. Oh, right, here um, this uh, six is fine. I'll have to watch out for Martinez, I guess, again because uh, you know her morale's dropping a little bit there, but. For the most part, it looks pretty good all, you know, all around. Alright, these guys shouldn't bother me, I don't think, so... We should be good. Maybe. I might have to end up killing them if they, like, you know, keep passing me, but we'll see how it goes. You're gonna harvest this, and we'll do some all out king here. I think at this point, only Sakari here needs to get some meat, so we'll just give him dull meat and preserve the rest, I guess. Which I really need to do. So, preserving, preserving. Hmm. I think we'll do it like this. There we go. That'll work just fine, I think. They seem, you know, kind of basically it's just away from me, apparently, so... They're either going to ambush me, or they're going to, like, you know, leave me alone. One or two. Oh, they're leaving me. So, there's a limit for how long they basically chase me there. They're carrying around, apparently. Now, I'm not exactly sure where I want this to be going right now. I, like, I could do, start doing, like, you know, the, like, you know, um, the quest over here at this tomb, but I probably want to go over to the Aztecs to meet them, you know, eventually, so I might do that soon. We'll see how it goes.
At this point, let's um, just do this. And I'm not by the way, we're in a plane still, even though like you know we're in a, it's like it's sort of like you know man is like sort of area on the map here, but whatever. The plane is a really big area in this game, by the way, so it takes a while to get out of it. Well, eventually I'll get out of it, I guess. Make some barricades, I guess. You're gonna do some herbalism for us, and. Double rations for Miguel because I still want to get him up to 7 if I can. Oh, we lost some valuables because, you know, that happens, but whatever. Well, let's go this way. I got one more, basically, of the, of the tractor plane space to find, and we're, like, good on that front. I think it's over here, but, you know... It's hard basically to know where, where to search for this because, you know, it is on the planes, but it's, it's a very big area to plane, so... It is a thing to, you know, you're going to take a while look, looking for it. Alright, animated grave. A simple cross marks a grave at this site, but though the marker itself is modest, the grave is alive with movement. Wind rustles leaves, fireflies buzz through the air, and bugs are crawling across the dirt mound. Dig up the grave. You exhume the very corpse, there's nothing unusual about the skull. Alright, that's, that's fine, let's just get over here. We're just gonna keep going this pattern over here, like, you know, I think get the western part of the map out of the way, I guess, for exploration. Eventually I might have to leave, by the way, just to get food surplus, because, you know, we're running a little bit low on food, but, you know... Oh, look at this, Raid of Burial Grounds. Natives have been known to bury their dead ne nearby. Send an expert member to search the graves for valuable trinkets. A higher patrolling skill and, and your own scouting will increase the potential loop from a grave robbing. This is dirty work, however, and may hurt the morale of the expert member assigned. So, you don't be very careful whenever you do this, but, you know, it's worth doing sometimes. Probably not with Raina, but, you know, maybe with da Danielle. You can do that. I'm all right. Let's allocate our meat. We'll make sure Sakara here gets his double rations again. Gabriel, preserve. You two preserve. And up it goes. Whoop! Lost some rations again. You know, I may want to go to some to like sell my medicine because I got a lot of it, and I you know could lose. It, I'm not careful. I also want to make money from it too as well. So, there's good reason to go try and get my rations out of the way. And damn it, there's another watering hole right there, but oh well. We'll get up here for now. Hunt. 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 You can do some patrolling. Well, I'll okay, these guys, and then you can also get, like, you know, your doubles. Backfire. Alright, so. A deafening blast resounds from the work benches in the back of the camp. You and the majority of the camp rush over to see what's happened. You find Mercedes Valente on the ground, riving under a blanket thrown over her by two of his servants. Smoke rises from under the blanket. The workbench she was working on has been blown apart. What happened? Mercedes was doing some sort of work involving oil and must have backfired. There was a fire everywhere. Alright, so, get to medical tent at once and clean up this mess. Yes, Capitan. Server calls for a few servants to fetch a cop from the medical tent and they carefully place the unconscious groaning Mercedes on the cot and carry her away. So, we didn't get ourselves a barricade this time and Mercedes blew up. Oh well, well. Hopefully, we can deal with that. Alright, I want to kill this guy, so. Die, piggy. Die again, piggy. Okay. 
Everyone's gonna have double ration tonight, I guess. And I guess we're probably, yeah, too far away from that, but whatever. Oh, there's these guys again. Um, passed them peacefully again, so... You once again encountered a hunting party that you avoided in the past. Now that they know you for one of, of peace, it should be no trouble to pass them peacefully again, if that is what you wish. Alright, let's pass them peacefully again. Knowing you're not the threat, the hunters let you pass for an instant. Some of them even wave politely at your people. Now, not by if you want to, you can like beat um, diplomatic the first time and then like attack him the second time. And you guys still like you know catch him by surprise if you want to, but eh, why not? We'll be nice. You get assigned by me, I guess. It's not how I want to use my medicine, but well, it's gonna be the way it is, I guess. I'll allocate new meat and. Well, let's just see how much of this I can preserve, I guess, so... Preserve, preserve, preserve... Okay, so I can get quite a bit preserved. And I can have, like, two meat on you... On you... So, six left. I don't ever want to stop my guarding, but you know, you can probably do some preserving, I guess. And you know what? Let's just go like this, because why not? It's not going to help these guys, I don't think, because they're like, you know, morale's too high for it, but whatever. Camp. No morale boost, unfortunately, but oh well. Oh, that's gonna be too far away to get to um, the, f the thing here for sure. So let's go over here. Go over here. And we'll probably go over here. Maybe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, that's perfect. Alright, let's go um, explore this way then. Now, note by the way that, like, you know, um, in terms of basically of being peaceful to us, Totonics, there's actually a reason to be peaceful to them. Hmm. Another one over here. The Temple of Death. Note those guys are basically guarding the area, so unless you like go really close to them, they won't actually like you know, attack you, but they'll basically come at you if you get too close. Let's allocate here, and then we'll just go, you know, do our thing, hunting, hunting, hunting. You're still severely burned, but it's fine. Hunting. Double rations for you. Patrolling for you. Where's, uh... Herbalism for you. Organization improves. Excellent. Now, I believe, like, this Temple of Death is basically, like, you know, the corner for, like, this part of the map, so... At this point, I have to start going in this direction, but, you know, whatever. Let's go say hi to him. Temple Guardians. A large area in this region is dotted with the ruins of very old buildings. It seems to be a reign of several small settlements, as none of the enormous pyramids that are characteristic of this region can be seen. Throughout your travels in this area, you feel like you're being followed. When you eventually catch a glimpse um, glimpses between the dense trees of a small temple that look mostly intact, a group of warriors appears, posting immensely with their weapons. They look competent, but not particularly well equipped. Alright, so you can attempt to invite dialogue if you want, or you can just fight them. We'll be peaceful, see what they're all about. 
You address the warriors politely in a way that emphasizes that you have no intention to fight them. They seem to get your meaning, but they warn you that they that they will not tolerate your pres presence in the area under any circumstances. And though they will allow you to turn back, they will kill you if you proceed. All right, so it's either fight or don't see the thing. So we're gonna fight them, and we're just gonna see what they're all hiding in here. Take these guys and hmm. I can't remember if this is a close range or long range fight, so let's just take these guys and let's go for it. So here's the battleground. We got ourselves a shaman, who's a veteran, a sergeant trapper, so we actually see like a powerful native here. Veteran trapper, sergeant warrior, lieutenant warrior, so we got a super warrior, and a veteran warrior. So these guys are all high ranking. And they're all ready to kick ass. My guys are like, you know, decent enough though. So you should be able to take these guys easily enough. Though, she's only man arms. So these guys can run like, I guess, 16. So 1, 2. Yeah, they're warriors. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is far from there. Get behind cover. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Wow, I got a hit. For some reason, getting lucky with the critical, like, you know, um, hits on the, you know, pot shots, but okay. Up, oh, you're out of range. Um, yeah, you can stay right there, I guess. Go here with you. Actually, you know what? I'll send you over here. You can go up here. Yeah. Another hit. I like, like my doctor with a pole arm because, you know, he has a pole arm and I'm actually making her use it finally. Oh, they're going to curse me apparently, or they're going to heal up this guy. Okay, they're going to charge. Note that these guys have different shield designs because they're basically high ranking guys, so. They're a little more dangerous than usual. The chance going to halt back, I guess, which is nice. Hmm. Okay, how do I want to do this? Well, first things first, let's have you go up to maybe here. And stunning blow. We'll have you basically do the same for the most part. And stunning blow. And the whole reason for doing that is just so that, like, you know... I can start flanking these guys, and of course get you over here to do this. And you can just go up here. You know what, you can take a shot too. Down he goes. Let's get back you over here. This seems like an excellent opportunity to use point blank, so... Damn, I missed. There's a hit. Now, I'm gonna basically send her up basically to like, you know, deal these guys, I think. So, get up here. And we're just gonna basically like get in melee range so that they can't do anything to these guys. That's perfect for you. I want you are sitting here, so let's go over here. You can get over here. This guy's gonna probably be able to do something. We'll see what he does in a moment. I don't think the warriors can stun, so he's just gonna be like, you know, a thing for where he is. There's a shaman coming again. Ow. Oh, there's a critical hit. 
I forgot about Ray of Arrows, and I guess they still does it. Oh. Or he's like a shot for it. Alright, you're gonna die. We're just gonna stun this guy. And at this point, let's move up to here to start supporting this guy. Um, Padella, how about you get over here? You can go over here and just point blank this guy. Yeah. Finish this guy off. The warriors are out of the way. And how about you just go up to here and just take a swipe? Oh. Now they might do ray of arrows again, but you know we'll put you over here. And Doctor Rain's go over here for now. And Rena, finish him off. Perfect. Oh, curse me. Not that it's going to amount to much. Ow. Um. Let's get you up here. You go here, and let's go at one. Two. And a doctor is in. You go here. Let's get you up here. You can run around. Probably should just move right there to get, you know, the flanking, but whatever. Down he goes. The warriors are beaten, but all alive so far. Your people guard them in the middle of the battlefield and look to you expectantly. Gable Yavar wastes her weapons casually at the defeated enemies. They try to kill us, Capitan. It's only fair we try to kill them back. Remember, mercy can be dangerous around these parts. Isabel Uranus looks across the captains with pity. They fought well, and they don't deserve to be slaughtered like animals. Let them go, Captain. I think we got the point across. Marisol Carso spits. They're no better than animals. All they know is how to fight or run away. We'd be doing the world a service by killing them. Sarah Barrow has been examining the wounds of one of the captains. Now she stands up. These are just young men and women fighting to defend their homes against strange intruders. And now, they're all prisoners of war. We should cut them loose and let them go. They're no threat to us anymore. So let them live. Or kill them. We'll let them live. Peaceful or happy, aggressive or, you know, not. You take what items you can use from the warriors, but leave them alive. You're fairly confident that they will all survive with each other's help. We got a little values for it, we got a little equipment. Which is useful because, you know, we lost some equipment, I think, on this one. Alright, who's uh, missing equipment? You're missing equipment, but uh, you're you missing equipment from before. Ah, you're one missing equipment. You lost a uh, piece of equipment right there. By the way, I have over a few experience again, which is nice. I may want to get my other soldier basically up to, um, you know, veteran status, so I might want to do that right now. I'm thinking about doing it. The other thing I might want to do with my experience by was actually get, like, you know, maybe Reyna up to, like, you know, full uh, lieutenant status at this point. Which would be a long way away, but, you know, might be worth doing. So I might start saving this as well. Alright, let's see what the Temple of Death is all about, shall we? Temple of Death. The Temple of Death lies in the middle of what must have been the densest and most troublesome stretch of the jungle of the continent. Your entire expedition is sweating and panting, like fat nobles accidentally caught in the running of the bulls. The temple itself appears to be less of a temple and more of a dungeon. A very flat pyramid is all that stands above ground, just enough to accommodate a wide set of stairs that ascend into the darkness of the ground. Worn inscriptions encircles the entrance. We'll examine the inscriptions. You spend a little time scrap scraping the overgrowth of the inscriptions around the entrance and determine that the Temple of Death is not just an apt mockinger invented by tribals, but indeed the original name of the temple. As far as you can tell from the weathered glyphs, the purpose of the construction is to honor Quescoto by inciting brash young men and women to throw their lives away with the promise of ventral treasures um, hidden somewhere deep inside. 
Anna Konya grabs her shoulder excitedly. The treasures hidden down there must be great indeed if the natives are willing to throw away their lives and attempt to claim them. With our equipment and our training, it should be a breeze for us to beat those trials. It's well Uranus shakes her head in amazement. Such overconfidence will only lead to our instruction. Who knows what deadly traps await us down there. Well, let's enter the temple and see what it's all about. The adventurous ones are happy about that, we got a little, you know, experience for it. The stairs seem to go on forever, but just as your people are about to give up and head back up despite your orders, the tunnel opens up into a large room with a checkered floor and holes all along the walls. Throw a rock into the room. You pick up a rock that lies along the wall and experimentally toss it into the room. The air ripples almost imperceptibly imper around what you can only assume to be poison darts shooting out of the tiny holes in the wall. You toss a few more rocks and quickly figure out the pattern of the um, trap tiles. So guide your people across the room. It mostly goes well, but a single unclear direction causes Cyril Barrow to step onto a trap plate, and she recoils at a scream, uh, um, with a scream as the dart buries herself deep in the shoulder. One of your servants grabs hold of Barrow and helps her back up to the staircase to be treated. On the other side of the room, you find a few golden trinkets. So yay, viables! Further, further down into the temple, you can make out the alluring glitter of more gold. Alright, proceed further into the temple. After deftly passing through the hallway full of swinging axes, you reach a circular room that looks like some sort of theater or arena. When you reach the middle of the room, the heavy stone door slams shut behind you and a smaller hatches will open along the walls. For a while, nothing happens, and while your people collect a few babble items scattered around the room, you begin to wonder if they're simply being trapped here, if you simply trapped here, but then a curious animal sticks its head from one of the hacks and growls at the side of you. Is there the animal? It looks like some sort of canine creature, but far sleeker than a wolf and far larger than a dog. You know, um, you know, it's a fur coat completely black and absorbs the dim light of your, of your torches in a natural way. Alright, let me just reread re this again. So, it looks like some sort of canine creature, but far sleeker than a wolf and far larger than any dog you've known. Its fur coat is completely black and absorbs the dim light of your torches in a natural way, and its eyes have a red gleam to them. More animals like it appear from other hacks and begin to circle you. Alright, deal with the creatures. When the creatures finally attack, your people don't know how to react. They split up and some of them are pinned down. Roselia Pouda receives a nasty bite in the neck before she can be saved, and when you finally kill the last of the dogs, and the doors of both ends of the room open again, the soldier must be carried back out to the temple by a couple of your servants. You can see what appears to be a treasure room further into a temple. Alright, so we'll do one more and basically get some more money. Proceed further into a temple. Alright, so, past the spike pit is a small room with a stone pit in front of a next door, and an elaborately car carved altar with a bowl and three women pipes slowly dripping colorless fluids that smell of different herbs. The pit contains a lever, and a puzzle would be straightforward enough if not for the poisonous snakes littering littering the floor of the pit. Alright, so send somebody into the pit to pull the lever. So you have to basically send someone to basically, like, you know, get, um, umph, basically. Um, let's see here. Who do I want to send? Let's send Adrian this time. Adrian survived nervously agrees to go in and pull the lever while he carefully examined the free pipes. As could only be expected, she returns with several snake bites. In the meantime, however, you have roughly translated the instructions on the altar with the pipes. One of them apparently releases the antivenom for, um, for the snake fluids. Alright, so examine the different fluids. With your limited medical knowledge, you can't be sure what pipe, um, which, which pipe, if any, contains the correct antivenom. So, Severa chooses the middle pipe immediately after drinking, she clutches her throat, making an unpleasant gurgling sound, and falls to the floor, arriving in pain. Two of your servants pick up the uh, groaning hunter and rush her back outside, so enter the treasure room. So I got some valuables for that. You appear to have finally reached the innermost room of the Temple of Death. On a dais, along the far wall, surrounded by, um, by valuable gems and golden trinkets, rests an exclusive mask shaped like a mostly humanoid skull, but very large fangs. The mask is adorned with blue stones, and its eyes are two enormous opals. From what you've picked up of the Aztec mythology, you're guessing it must represent the creator god, Tezcapococa, or Smoky Mirror. So claim the treasure! You take the mask and the rest of the valuables distribute distribute around the dais and leave the way you came. So we got a lot of valuables for this. <coughs> and we also got a lot, you know, some other stuff as well. Now, notably, by the way, because like, you know, we went in there, like, you know, got my guys very injured. Um, you're severely poisoned, you're critically, you know, got lacerations. 
and she's fatally poisoned. So we're not looking too great with, great with these guys being like really injured. So that's something to watch out for. But you know, hopefully I can start like you know healing these guys up. You know, as they go along here. So kind of a dangerous like you know um, endeavor basically going in here. But you know whatever, it's, it pays off with like lots of valuables and stuff.